Hey everybody, welcome to 2024 and the season for the Full Tilt Leadership Podcast. It is all about today, Lacey Ween, who is, uh, your title is so long, Lacey. She's the director of Geospatial, Autonomy Robotics, Oracle, and law enforcement or public safety efforts at Kerasoft. And the theme that Lacey picked for us today that I'm so excited about is leaders build relationships. So welcome to the show, Lacey. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. So Lacey is a friend to our very our all of our different platforms. She's been on the Dawn of Drones. She'll be upcoming on the Dawn of Autonomy this year. And I'm just so excited to have you, Lacey, now on this leadership podcast because uh, we're going to start at the beginning and, and it really dives deep into who you are and what you bring to Kerasoft and the culture that you've helped create there. And just the theme you picked, I think, speaks volumes of leaders build relationships. So let's start in the beginning and let's talk about your background, because in my experience, of course, those first relationships are are in the house, right? They're, they're with your family and in your neighborhood and with your friends. And uh, here we have a picture already <laughs> of you as a little girl. So tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Yeah, of course. So um, so my upbringing, so I'm from a small town in Virginia. Um, it's called 10th Legion. It's like, uh, most of you guys probably don't know where that is, but um, it's about two hours outside of the, the DC, Northern Virginia area. Um, I, I lived in that area my entire life until I, I ended up going to college. Um, it's still one of my you know favorite places to visit, a great place to go home to. Um, and so for some background too, I think um, you know what what really helped shape my career and, and my path as a leader. Um, so at Kerasoft, I'm you know one of the sales leaders in the company. Um, I've been with the company for 12 years, um, but it's always something where I'm like you know I feel like I've been in sales like my entire life um, since I was I was younger. Both of my parents, you know, own small businesses. Um, so even as a child, I, you know, I loved going to work with my mom on a Saturday. I'm like, let me, let me answer the phone. Can I, can I take the calls? Can I answer the phone and write down appointments? Um, and then same with, you know, my dad would get, um, this is back before you had cell phones. So the number in the phone book was our house phone. Um, and I loved, you know, answering the house phone and, um, helping take his calls and, um, write them down. I know he would get compliments. We're like, wow, your daughter is like, you know, she's, she's great on the phone. I think I was like five years old. Um, <laughs> talking to his customers and help take notes and, um, you know, pass it over to him. But um, I feel like it was a thing where I'm like, you know, I've always been kind of in sales and able to, you know, interact with people even from such a young age, um, which I feel like helped really, you know, shape kind of my career path to some extent. Yeah. So it really sounds like your mom and dad were formative, not just obviously at home and just as part of the family, but in your in your career from an early time. And I imagine this idea of, you know, relationships and leadership and the the, the connection there, that's something you saw every day probably with your mom and dad then. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Something I got to see, you know, firsthand every day by, you know, going to work, answering the phones, Um you know, and I, I loved every part of it. Like I still always say, I'm like, I, you know, the, the best customer service I've ever seen is just like listening to my dad on the phone. Um, it's, it's, it's always funny to listen to him. Like, you know, he's, he's just so nice and like, so helpful. I'm like, wow, this is, this is really impressive. So I learned a lot from that. But um, I think one of the other great things too, was just, you know, growing up in a small town and um, the sense of community. So um, getting to, you know, interact with the community, whether it was through different groups I would get involved in, different you know, customers I would see, we always had a really great close relationship. And I still do with, um, you know, my parents, neighbors, I see them every time I go home and, um, you know, they've been there to help kind of, you know, give me good career advice, help make connections as well. So it's, um, you know, being kind of part of that, that small community is, is always been really beneficial too. That's so cool. Now you mentioned, you know, watching and listening to your dad on the phone, but is there any particular event, like, as you look back that you, you would say it was, really formative to your thinking on this idea that leaders build relationships. Yeah. And I think, so honestly, I've, I've got a lot of them. It's hard to pick. It's hard <laughs> to pick. On, but um, when I really thought about this question, I'm like, you know, from early in my childhood, I was always part of a team or part of a group um, from, you know, being in Girl Scouts to, 
Um, most people are surprised when they find out that I was actually on a jump rope team um, <laughs> when I was younger. I before. love it. I still, I jump rope in the gym, man. I love that. Yeah, so I know. Fun. It was, it was really fun. It was, and we used to do, you know, perform at halftime shows at like um, the local, you know, college games and stuff. It was really fun. But from, you know, being on a team, being, you know, I was a cheerleader in high school and, um, you know, after that went on to, to college and was part of a sorority. I feel like I was always part of part of a group. Um, so just building that relationship with your teammates, with your peers, um, getting to know other leaders as part of those groups as well and, and take on those leadership roles um, was really helpful for me. Like, you know, I was always excited, like in my sorority, for example, to take on, um, hey, I wanted, you know, a chair position. I wanted a leadership position. And, um, you know, how do you really build those relationships and, and get there and then contribute to the larger group? So, um, I would say there's there's a lot of things that I think helped help contribute to that and why I think this is, you know, such a, a relevant topic, both, you know, whether you're in sales or, or any career is just building, building those relationships and, and continuing to nurture those relationships. You know, you're talking about you raising your hand for all these leadership positions in particular throughout your career, you know, your education. We're going to we're going to get to your education in a second here. But if we could pop that first picture up again real quick, uh, because I want to highlight what it says on this shirt. <laughs> uh as it pans out go lacy tell them what it says it says my world my rules i love it so from an early age you're like i'm taking charge you know mm -hmm. like i'm raising my hand and i love that so uh that's a great saying uh but looking back was there also was there like a particular saying or phrase or something that stands out in your mind that one of your mentors or a leader or someone around you said that really kind of stuck with you throughout your life that you know, kind of relevant to this idea of relationships and leadership? Yeah. So um, I think one that always still sticks out, and again, kind of relates to this theme as well. My mom would always tell me, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Um, and I think this was really important because to me, that really means, you know, having mentors, having sponsors and having these relationships that can, you know, you work with other people to help you reach your goals to be where you want to be. And then you're surrounding yourself with those people that you want to be like. So, you know, surrounding yourself with people who might be smarter than you or who might have a job you want or who might have, you know, a, a skill that you want. Um, I really took that as like you can just learn so much from being around other people and building those relationships and um, letting people help you get get to where you want to be and to reach your goals. I, I couldn't agree more. And I think that's a great segue to talk then about your education, because you mentioned some of your extracurriculars, whether it was the jump rope, to, you know, jump rope or the cheerleading and also later than your sorority. So why don't you walk us a little bit through the time when you were in school and uh, some of the things that helped shape who you are. So here's a great picture of you. Tell us about this one. Yeah, of course. So um, so for education, so I went to Radford University, also in Virginia. Um, I started there um, with my major in interior design. Um, did that for about two years until over the summer I had an internship at a law firm. Um, I absolutely loved it so much that I decided, I think I'm just going to change paths and go in a completely different direction. And hey, maybe I want to go to law school. So um, changed my major to political science. And that was the, the degree that I, I graduated with. Um, had full intentions of going to law school, although that ended up changing eventually as well. But um, I think some of the things you know that I really kind of took away from this experience in college. It wasn't always just the things that, you know, I learned in a classroom. Um, there was so much more to it with, you know, like I mentioned, I was in a sorority and the picture you just saw had, um, you know, some of my closest sorority sisters who I'm still friends with today. I think one of them is actually listening live on here right now. Yay. But, um, you know, it was such a great way to build those relationships, um, you know, and just have that core group of friends in your life that you have for, for a lifetime. Um, and it was, you know, I think that was probably one of the most valuable parts of my college experience. Again, it's like, you know, you learn so much from, um, hey, how do you, you know, I, I took on some leadership roles. I was the, I think it was technically called vice president of new member education in my sorority where I would help with, um, you know, all the new pledges and get them educated and, and trained and get them through the process and, until initiation. And um, you got to, you know, I got that experience of kind of learning a different type of leadership role of, okay, how do I, you know, mentor um, someone who's newer? How do I help, you know, guide them through this, you know, difficult or challenging process and, and get them through to the other side and where they want to be? So early on, I feel like it was a really valuable experience that um, 
you know, I was, I was fortunate enough to, to have in college. Well, I, I have to tell everybody out there, I've, I've been around this lady a lot in the last couple of years, and I'm learning so many new things. Lisey, I had no idea, number one, you were so artsy. It makes sense. Uh, number two, sportsy. And we're going to see some of your balance pictures later, uh, you know, kind of what you focus on to maintain balance in your life. I'm really excited to talk about that, too. Uh, but also, you know, all of this leadership from from such a young age and, you know, for everybody listening out there, young or old, it doesn't matter. I love the message that you're indirectly saying here to Lacey. It's that there's always time to pivot and just to grow because I love, you know, your your story from college is very much like mine. I'm not going to get into it. The show's about you. Uh, but I love how you were just exploring things that you had interest in you know, whether it was interior design and then it was, um, you know, ultimately political, you know, maybe law school and ultimately political science. Um, you know, I, I think that also is the the mark of a true leader to, you know, not be afraid to move from a particular path that you're on to explore other things. And all of those things just kind of go in the bucket that is you, you know, and kind of make up who you are. So really, really cool. What advice would you give to others about their education? Because yours was, you know, certainly it wasn't a straight line. You know, you had a lot of, you know, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll do that. Ultimately, you came out on the other side, poli side, but then finally, you know, went into sales and marketing, which just seems like was in your blood, literally. <laughs> um, tell us, you know, what advice would you give to others about their education as they kind of view that? Yeah. So I think my advice, I mean, right along those lines, as you can see it, you know, I, I didn't have that straight path. I changed my mind a lot. Um, and it's, I think my advice really be, it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to not, you know, have a clear answer on, Hey, here's exactly what I want to do. Um, you know, I had no idea that I would end up in a, in a sales role, um, when I was in college was, wasn't even on my radar. And again, until I thought about it, I got in like, wow, this is kind of something I've, I've always done. How did I not, you know, figure this out before? How did I, I not know this? But, um, I think knowing that, hey, it's okay to change your mind. Um, it's okay to try different things until you figure out what's the best fit. Um, and I think it's also really important to like find a mentor early. So whether those mentors are, um, you know, your teachers or, um, you know, your family, your neighbors, your friends, um, find someone who's there that, hey, you can bounce ideas off of. Um, they've maybe been through some of these experiences before and they can help guide you and give you that advice to, to, you know, figure out the direction that's, you know, that's best for you to go in. Uh, more great advice. Always have kind of a shoulder to lean on someone to get bounce ideas off of, you know, looking back, was there a standout teacher or professor for you that comes to mind as someone that really helped kind of guide you and shape your path? Yeah, so I, I had a couple. Um, the one that comes top of mind is actually one of my high school teachers. Um, so I was also um, kind of along with my, I guess, more creative side. Um, I was also um, on the editorial staff of, of the yearbook committee um, for a couple of years. Um, we had a, a really phenomenal photojournalism program. So it was our, um, our photojournalism teacher. And, you know, she was she was just so great at really like kind of giving you that opportunity to to learn something new, um, whether it was just, hey, I learned how to use all this design technology that um, kind of sometimes relates to some of the products that I sell today, um, to, you know, pushing me to, I actually, my senior year of high school took on a, a new role with um, doing ad sales. So again, when I say I've been in sales for a long time, um, <laughs> it, it started much earlier than some people think or that I remember, but um, it was a really neat thing. Like I would, you know, to leave school for an hour a day during lunch and I would go to local businesses and help sell, you know, ad space for the yearbook. Um, so it was a really cool way to, again, kind of interact with the community, meet people with, you know, in local businesses, and then, um, you know, get them involved with something the school was doing, help, you know, sell those, help close the deals, um, make sure we were, you know, meeting our numbers. And then I got to do a little bit of design on some of those too. So it was a, it was a really, you know, fun experience. Um, and I think that's what I appreciate so much about, um, you know, my teacher who kind of helped push me in that direction of, Hey, maybe try this. This is something you, you know, you might enjoy, you might be really good at it. Like, um, let's give it a try. And I always appreciate that kind of extra push or that, that suggestion. I, you know, I don't know that everyone fully appreciates how, how formative teachers are in our lives, you know, uh, good, bad, otherwise, 
Um, here's a great example of someone that really kind of pushed you to do something that ultimately you, you figured out you did love. And that's, yeah. that's super cool. Um, so, you know, learning doesn't stop when you graduate college or normally it doesn't. <laughs> uh, so, you know, how, how do you kind of continue to learn and grow through the years as a leader? Yeah. So this is something, I mean, I, I, I feel like I always do this and I talk about this a lot, um, in some of the, you know, in, in my company and some of the, the internal courses that, um, that I help lead as well. But, um, I think it's really important to kind of keep up with that proactive learning. So, um, a lot of the things, especially when I got into this industry with, um, you know, being in a sales role, selling specifically to the government, um, and then keeping up with the technology, there were a lot of things to learn. Um, there's always a lot of things to learn. Um, and you've got to kind of keep up with the technology, keep up with the industry and keep up with those changes. Um, so for me, it was, there were a couple of things. One, it was always a, you know, the easy one was, hey, take advantage of the trainings that you're offered. So anytime there was a, you know, product training or a leadership training, you know, I was the first to, to raise my hand. I'm like, great, I'll be there. Can't, can't wait. Um, but a lot of it too is that what I call like proactive learning. So I would take a lot of it upon myself of, okay, you know, and when I first got into sales, um, the territory that I handled was the, the Department of Defense. Um, I went in and subscribed to every like news site, blog. I set up Google alerts for myself to make sure that like, hey, I need to know what's going on in the industry. Um, and every single morning, I would start my morning with like, you know, while I'm having my, I, I'm not necessarily morning coffee, my my morning tea, actually, <laughs> um, since I'm not a coffee drinker, while I was having my morning tea or having breakfast, like it was a good opportunity for me to kind of read those articles that came in throughout the evening of, okay, let me let me at least read one or two of these articles to keep up with just a relevant trend, a relative initiative initiative or, um, you know, understanding what's going on with the, the federal budget. Um, so I would always take that opportunity to sign up for the right things and proactively learn. Um, but same with, you know, attending, like, especially when it comes to building these relationships. And, you know, we've talked about, um, you know, I feel like you've, you've learned so much from other people and being around other people. Um, yes, it was yeah. just showing up to different events and getting involved in new events. So a lot of times that meant, um, you know, sitting through an entire day of sessions and listening to people talk. Um, but I would learn so much and take away so many great things from that. And I think it's really just, you know, one is saying yes to the opportunity when you have the opportunity to learn, but also, again, doing those proactive things that you can take upon yourself to, um, you know, continue to, to educate yourself and others. That's a great tagline, saying yes to the opportunity. And, you know, I had the opportunity just recently, everybody to, to go with Lacey to EDGE 2024. Yeah. It used to be called Government CES. And, and to your point, Lacey, you know, so many of those panels, you know, I was thinking, man, I'd love to write an article about this, but you know, I didn't really have have a place to put something like that. But I sat through the talks anyway, and I learned so much, whether it was about artificial intelligence or cybersecurity, you know, I mean, some of them were talking at a level like higher than because that's like their world and what they live in every day. Uh, but even just by osmosis to kind of learn from people around you, I think is so, so critical. So, uh, you know, we talked about your college at Radford and then you graduated poli sci. So let's talk about your early careers. Tell us, you know, where did you land initially? Yeah. So right after college, I actually, my first job out of college was actually at a very, very small software company in Harrisonburg. They were selling software into higher education. And I was actually in the accounting department. Um, so I was, I was not in sales. Um, I got to be really, really great at using Excel um, <laughs> and, you know, calculating a lot of numbers and typing really fast. Um, I also ended up having to make some collections calls as part of that role, which was not a fun part of the job. Yeah. Um, so it was a good experience. I, I learned some, you know, some some valuable skills from it. It, it wasn't quite a fit for me. Um, I learned that pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, I also wanted to move. I was, you know, pretty set on, hey, I, I want to, you know, move up to the Northern Virginia area. I have friends there. I know that there's a ton of job opportunities in the area. Um, I was really interested in in something related to government. Um, I'd actually interviewed for a couple government jobs, a couple government contractors. Um, and during this process, I, I found Kerasoft. Um, people think it's funny when I tell them, like, I actually would like drive down the road, like as I'm you know, coming through here and I would write down names of companies that I would see and I'd go home and look them up and look at their career site. Um, and that's how I would find most of um, 
most of the jobs that I was I was looking at at the time. But well, it's um, a good approach. I mean, if you're yeah. trying to find something close to where you yeah. live or where you want to live to see what's in the neighborhood and what the opportunities are. Actually, I think it's pretty smart. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, it, it worked well for me. And then, you know, I, I found Kerasoft and I, I figured out pretty quickly that it was a, a good fit. Um, you know, I, I loved all the people that I met with and, um, you know, the people that I was going to be working with. Cause I'm like, you know, it's important to, to like the people that you work with too. So um, I loved the company, the company culture. Um, we were a really small company at the time um, back in, I, I, I've been here for 12 years. So, um, when I started in, in the beginning of 2012, we were a much smaller company. So it's been really cool to be part of that and, um, get to experience and, and see the growth as well. But, um, it kind of had all the qualities that I was looking for from, Hey, I'm interested in sales. You know, we can check that box. I'm interested in government. We can check that box. Um, you know, this seems like a, a, a good cultural fit as well. Yeah. I mean, and, you, you started small, but for those that don't know, Carasoft is like a $17 billion master government aggregator, IT reseller, and Lacey's been a part of that from the beginning. So what was your best experience? Yeah, so my best experience, it was actually a really interesting experience. And I've, I've, it was hard to choose because I'm like, I've had so many really great ones, but I feel like this one was really unique. Um, so a couple years, um, a couple years into my career, I got the, I was, um, still as a sales account manager, um, the primary account that I was supporting was the Navy. Um, you can see the picture here, um, from a really interesting project we worked on. It was with the USS constitution when it was in dry dock in, in Boston. So, um, a couple of us went up to, um, went up to Boston for a, a couple days. Um, it poured down rain the whole time, um, but we still had a blast. It was chilly, even though it was May. Um, and we did an entire 3D scan of the interior and exterior of the ship. Um, wow. So we, we create a digital twin of that um, to use for maintenance, repair, and overhaul. Um, so it was a really interesting project. I've got this one's up on top of the ship. I've, I've got an even cooler one, but it was kind of hard to see where we're actually like <laughs> under the ship. And like, how often do you really get to be like under the, you know, oldest U.S. commissioned ship? So um, it was a really interesting project, a really neat experience. And I think for me, it was... Um, you know, while it maybe wasn't, um, it was sales related because it was a customer that we we sold to and a project that we worked on jointly with the Navy. But um, it really just gave me a different, unique experience um, that I could take a lot of things from and learn from. I learned some technical skills that I didn't necessarily have before um, that I think helped me kind of, you know, get get some more ideas for um, some of the things I was doing in my day-to-day -day job. But um, again, it was also another really neat experience of um, kind of getting, getting to do something different, um, getting to really know and understand your customer and see, Hey, what, you know, what are their needs? What do they care about? And then just started to, you know, better develop and, and cultivate those relationships with them as well. Yeah. You know, it cracks me up when you said you were like sitting in some cubicles doing accounting spreadsheets. You know, when you look at that picture, it's like, well, that's the Lacey I know. She's out and about, on, you know, learning, yes. learning things, you know, talking to people, getting to know the customer. That's super cool. Uh, that would have been an awesome experience. You know, Lacey, sometimes, you know, we even learn from our worst experiences, right? Or the worst leader you ever ran into. Uh, of course, we don't need to be using names or specific companies mm -hmm. or anything like that here. But can you like just kind of anonymize something like this uh, in such a way to say like, here was an experience. It wasn't the best, but this is kind of the nugget of wisdom I got out of that. Yeah, I think so. My my most challenge experiences have been in and I've had a couple of these. Unfortunately, it wasn't just a one time thing, but, um, you know, especially in sales, when when you lose a deal, you lose a deal that you've been working on for months or for years and, you know, it, it goes a different direction for some, you know, unforeseen reason. Um, I've had it happen, you know, a, a handful of times, as does everyone in sales. Um, there's one in particular that stands out, um, you know, of a, a partner that we we used to work with. And um, again, the, it was a large customer. They, they took the deal in a, in a totally different direction last minute. Um, and unfortunately, it, it didn't go through us. But every time that's happened, I feel like I've learned a lot from it. And the biggest thing is like, you know, not to give up and not to stop trying. Um, this happened, the, the specific deal that I have in mind, it was probably about five years ago, we lost that deal. Yeah. Um, it was a three-year contract. And, you know, myself and my team, we didn't give up on it. It was like, okay, hey, we 
we didn't win it, but that's okay. For the next three years, what can we do to make sure that three years from now, this, this one comes back to us? Um, and luckily it, it did. Um, as I know, that's oh, not wow. always the case with everything, but I think the biggest thing I learned was, hey, don't give up. Um, you don't have to take no for an answer. Um, I feel like that's something that, you know, I, I always have in the back of my mind a lot of like, okay, sometimes no is the easy answer. And sometimes it's, hey, this is what happened. Okay, let's move on. But um, I don't always like that option. So I think figuring out, um, you know, and again, it goes back to, to building relationships. So, hey, how do you still continue to, you know, support that customer and help them out and, um, you know, get them on the path to be a customer again? How do you work with the partner to build those relationships and show the value of, hey, here's the value that we were bringing to this. Here's why we're part of this. Um, how do we, how do we get this back in, in the right direction? So um, I think that's the important thing too, is, you know, you don't have to take no for the answer, but then continue to use those relationships to your advantage to get something going back in the right direction again. Yeah, I, I think that's great. And, you know, I, it, it's hard. I, it's almost harder sometimes, Lacey, when, when your, your model is built around relationships and you do get that negative experience that, that no, or whatever it is, uh, because then it's like, wait a minute, I thought we had a relation, you know, it's just, you know, and I, so on the one hand, it's like, you're building these relationships. On the other hand, you have to realize that it's, that you cannot take it personally, right. That it's not personal, you know, especially in business, it's about business. And, uh, I love that, you know, just kind of keep going, uh, see what you can do to turn things around. And sometimes you can't, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out, but, you know, at least giving it, giving it a try and, uh, you know, because I think those relationships um, are key. And I love this story, how the person or the company came back uh, three three years later. I mean, you just never know. Uh, so keeping those doors open is, is really key. So as you think about your um, career, uh, you know, what, what tips would you give? Again, whether young or old, what, what tips would you give to people? I, I just heard one great nugget, you know, never give up. Um, are, do you have any others? Yeah. Um, so I think my biggest one, which I think is especially super relevant right now um, with, with you know, where things are in the world is just showing up and being present. Um, you know, I know, especially the last couple of years, I feel like, you know, there's been a huge shift in, um, you know, the in-person interactions that people have um, yes. because we all get so comfortable with working from home. You know, it's, it's easy. I get comfortable with it too. I love it. Yeah. Um, but until you really get out there and hey, whether it's showing up at an event, showing up in your office just to collaborate with your coworkers, um, you kind of forget how valuable that in-person interaction is. So taking the opportunity to, you know, be there, just show up. It's, it's that simple sometimes, just showing up and being present. Um, you can really help develop these relationships again, whether it's internally with your own coworkers or your own team or with you know, a team that you mentor or a team that you manage to, you know, new folks in the industry or people that you haven't seen in a while. Um, and for me, it's always something where, you know, again, it's it's easy. It's always easy to just, hey, I'm going to stay home and, and work from home. But, um, you know, there's that energy that you get from other people when you're out, when you're meeting in person, um, you know, when you're attending an exciting event together, it's just really invaluable. Yeah, I mean, I think there's something about physicality, right? Like, I think there's something about, as you said, being present. Um, you know, we talked about education earlier, and and you know, I, I I was a professor at a college, and they asked me my option: Do you want to do it online or in person? And you know, it was super. It wasn't convenient to go in person. It was an hour drive each way, and you know, but I was thinking about my own kids, my my own person, my own self, and I was just like. You know, I, I think it's important to be present. You know, it yeah, absolutely would have been easier, you know, but just making those kind of, you know, human to human connections in the classroom at work, as you said, whether it's around the water cooler or, you know, in someone's cubicle, uh, it, it's, it makes such a difference. So I think that that is a great message because I agree with you, Lacey. I think, you know, the era of COVID, we're not quite past it. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know that I agree with the whole, you know, like, strong arming people to come back into the office. I think there a balance is great. Um, I think anything in balance is great, which actually is a very good way to transition to our next topic, which is about balance. Um, because, you know, it's, it's so hard when you're, you know, hard charging professional like yourself, 
uh, you're in the government space, you're, you're dealing with technologies, lots of companies juggling a ton of money, um, you know, in the office, out of the office, how do you attain balance in your own life? Yeah. So for me, I've, I've always, I've always found it pretty easy to do that, to be honest. Um, you know, I've, I've never, really been, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I've never really been someone who kind of, you know, I, I, I like to set some boundaries, but not those hard lines of like, um, you know, like I'm, I'm someone who, and, and I'm sure most leaders are, most people probably listening to this are, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm available at any time. I'm available whenever I'm needed. Um, but I've also, you know, kind of taken a different perspective on it of, Hey, sometimes if I have to do something, you know, respond to an email or take a call um, or, you know, check my email or phone, you know, after normal business hours. Like it, it doesn't take up that much time out of my day. Mm -hmm. um, and when I'm not looking at it as like, a, hey, this is some big dwelling task I have to do. It, it, it takes a couple seconds to do something. And sometimes those just like those, you know, quick responses and things like that just go such a long way. Um, so I think a lot of it, honestly, is it's about perspective and how you see it. Um, and again, setting some of those again kind of boundaries to some extent but also like time blocking your day is something that i you know I, I always do i feel like i've i've always been pretty good at doing this of you know whether it's um hey this is you know the hour of my day i'm going to focus on this project and that's what i'm gonna do for an hour and then i'm gonna move on um here's an hour of my day i'm gonna you know or 30 minutes of my day great i'm gonna catch up on emails and i'm gonna do it and i'm, I'm gonna move on um you know, and I, I plan things like that, even in my personal life. And don't let it come across. I'm not like a super scheduled person who's always on an agenda. It's a very loose plan, very loose agenda that has a lot of flexibility to move around. But for me, it's always been helpful to kind of put together that list of, okay, here's what I'm planning to do today. And again, that list includes things that I kind of blend them together from these are things I'm doing at work. Um, but it's everything even in my personal life too, from, you know, planning my, my workouts, planning when, you know, I, I cook dinner every night, planning when I'm going to cook dinner, um, you know, making sure I plan downtime or time to relax too is, is also really important. But I think once you figure out, okay, what are those priorities and, you know, realizing your to-do list doesn't have to be just full of work things. Um, your to-do list for your entire day includes some personal things too and when and, and, and how are you going to get those done? You know, I, just listening to you uh, resonates very strongly with me because you know, what I always told people, especially when I was a boss and I had people working for me, uh, you know, in the military in particular, is, you know what? Balance is hard. Like to have balance actually takes work. And to say that you're like scheduling things for your personal life, I think is really important because, you know, for many people, that's the first thing to go. You know, it's just like they put all their eggs into the work basket. And then they, you know, there, there's those different pillars of your life, right? Whether it's, um, you know, obviously work, but there's the physical, emotional, spiritual. If you don't take care of those things, you're kind of useless to everybody, including to yourself. So I'd like to explore a little bit because, you know, you, you grew up as an athlete. Uh, you know, what do you do to stay physically fit? I think we might have a picture here that I saw. <laughs> I yeah, there is, there is one. All right. Um, let's Go ahead and roll that. Yes, Look at you. I know that was in um, Runyon Canyon in LA. Wow. Um, I know it was, it was such a great view. I was like, let me do like a cool yoga pose here and, and <laughs> take a picture. Um, but yeah, for me, as far as, you know, just maintaining the balance and the well being, like, I think it is so important to prioritize yourself and that time for yourself every day. Um, for me, I, I like to, once I started working from home, I decided to repurpose my lunch break. So instead of going out and um, probably, you know, eating a, a cheeseburger or something that I, I maybe didn't need. I decided that, hey, I'm going to start working out during this lunch break. And then, you know, I can eat lunch at my desk while I'm on my next call. But um, I kind of repurposed that that hour of time to, um, I have a Peloton bike at home. So I um, started doing Peloton workouts. And it's something I do every day, every single day during lunch. And that time shifts. It's not a set time every day, but sometime generally in the middle of the day, I'm like, that's my time. Um, it's my time for myself. And it, it was something I never did like in the middle of the work day before. Um, but I thought it was so important once I started doing it because I noticed so many changes. Like the biggest one being is, you know, by the afternoon, I'm like, I kind of get that, like, you know, after lunch, you get that afternoon slump at like, you know, yeah. two or three o'clock. Um, I don't have that anymore. Um, yes. and like, like taking that time in the middle of the day to just have a break for myself, a moment for myself. Um, and again, some days, 
you know, I have more time. Some days it's, let me just do a really short workout because, you know, doing something is, is better than nothing. But putting that time for myself, it helped me re-energize. Like, I think it just helped me, you know, you get up from your desk, um, you kind of move around that stagnant energy. And then um, it was a good reset in the middle of the day. So I'm like, okay, great. I'm back. Um, so for me, I always love doing that in the middle of the day. But like, again, I'm, you know, I, I do kind of plan things out where today um, I'm not home in the middle of the day to get on my Peloton bike. So that workout got shifted to, you know, seven o'clock this morning. Um, so <laughs> different time, even though I'm not a morning morning person who likes to work out in the mornings, but you know, it's a thing where I've, I've kind of told myself, okay, this is something that's important. It's important to take that time to yourself every day. And, and I'm, I'm going to do that. So, um, I like doing the, a lot of the things on the Peloton app, including the yoga classes, the strength classes. Um, and I'm also a big fan of meditation. Um, I used to do meditations at night. Um, and then about the last year or so ago, I actually started shifting to doing those in the morning. Um, so for me, it was always, it's kind of a nice way to start the day and, you know, start the day with a clear mind. Um, I've also done them like in the middle of the day, even just like a five or 10 minute, you know, if you're having a rough day, let me take, you can always take five minutes and let me do a quick meditation or a quick, like just stretch and move around. It's quick five minute reset and, you know, you're back. So I think it's, you know, whatever, whatever it is for you that you find something that's, you know, um, important to you, like just, just planning the time to like, nope, this is a non-negotiable. I'm, I'm going to do this at some point today because it's, it's time for myself. No, that's critical. And I love what you said about also your, you know, changing your perspective a little bit, because I think for some people, you know, it's, it's almost like if I don't go to the gym for an hour and a half, then it's not worth it. But, you know, like you said, you could do a five minute meditative reset mentally and feel so much better. You can do a 30 minute, you know, interval workout, pretty intense and, and walk away feeling pretty energized afterwards uh, for that afternoon. Right. So yeah. it's, it's all about perspective and, and taking that time. And I think that's, you know, I think that is a recipe for success. Um, any other tips in that arena, when you think about balance that you want to want to share, like, say you were counseling one of the people that worked for you, what would you tell them uh, about balance in their lives? Yeah. So I think, you know, I, I talked a little bit about how it's a lot of it too, is all on your perspective. Um, you know, and just kind of moving that energy around. But I think it's important to really focus on instead of just the, hey, the the work-life balance, but like really balancing your energy and putting as much energy as you can into the things you like doing. Um, you know, there's there's going to be parts of it, you know, I always teach you, like, don't take it the wrong way because that doesn't mean that you just can't do the things that you don't like to do. Right, right, right. There's always going to be things that you don't really en enjoy, um, but you have to do them. But I think when you really, you know, put the focus on, you know, for me, it's like, again, there's things in my job that, um, you know, I, I love, you know, coaching new sales leaders. I love taking on new projects, like those types of things. I, I love doing, you know, some of the in-person events. I'm like, great. How do I do more of those things? Because again, that gives me energy and I enjoy it to the things in my personal life. Like, you know, the working out that we talked about, like, I also love to cook. I cook every day. It's like, for me, it's not a, a task. It's my favorite part of the day. And I'm like, okay, like, you know, how do I, you know, do more with coming up with new recipes and cooking? And like, those are the things that I've noticed, like, that's what gives me energy. Um, and that's what gets me excited to, to do all these other things. And um, it makes the the hard things that you don't like as much a little easier when I think you can shift that perspective and, okay, the things I don't like, like, hey, I'm, I'm going to get through this. And if I just do it, it's probably going to take me 10 minutes and then we're done and we can move on. But um, when you fill your time with more of the things that you enjoy doing, I think it, it makes it much easier to keep that balance. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, leading others obviously is something you do on a daily basis. Um, you know, what would you say is the most rewarding aspect of leading others? So I think for me, the most rewarding is really just like, you know, watching your team grow and watching them become leaders too. Um, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity in the last 12 years that I've been here to, you know, build out a team, grow that team. Um, and some of my team has, you know, I've got people on my team who have worked with me for years. Um, so it's so great. And, and I know you've met some of them too, Dawn, and, and see the, the emerging leaders on my team. So I think for me, that's that's the most rewarding is being able to, to see them grow in, in their careers as well and become leaders. Very cool. Here's a pick. What's this pick from? Yeah. So this one is actually from a couple of years ago from the USGIF Geo Gala. It's a black tie event um, for the intelligence community that's, that's hosted every fall. It's one of my favorite events of the year. Um, and I put this picture in here because to me, this one, um, is a picture of me with a couple, um, a couple 
you know, people who I see as leaders in the industry um, who have been there, you know, to help support me and who help support other emerging leaders. So, um, you know, it's, it's always a great example too of them, like, Hey, putting yourself in um, these scenarios with, you know, more senior leaders in the industry, um, people who are, you know, willing to, to help you, to guide you, to give you advice, um, you know, can really help you, you come a long way. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, all right. Best boss and why? Oh, well this, this one's an easy one. Um, so I, so it's my, it's my current boss. Um, <laughs> Craig. <laughs> Let's say Craig and and Tiffany as well, who you got to meet last. I week. did. I finally got to meet her. Yeah, and I think you know, with both of them, it's it's you know, I think just having that support and the trust um, is what's been really important to me. It's something that I've noticed with you know my bosses. Hey, they trust me. Um, they trust my guidance. They they trust my opinions, and they also trust that like if I need help, I'm going to ask and I'm going to go to them for questions. And that's something I've always taken you know, into to my leadership style as well as, hey, I, I want to trust my team and I want them to know that I trust them um, so they feel confident in what they're doing. Um, they feel confident coming to me and asking for help or asking for guidance. Um, so I think that's been one of the really kind of key things that, that has stood out is just, you know, um, you know, having having trust. And again, I mean, I've, I've also worked with my bosses for 12 years, so um, it gives you a lot of time to build a really great relationship and, and build that trust. But I feel like it's also something that you know, I've, I've had from, from the beginning here too. And that that's actually rare for, you know, you, I think you're kind of unique, Lacey, in a way that you stayed with one company for 12 years in, in tech, you know, and, and in emerging mm -hmm. tech uh, in particular. So that's, that's really cool. Um, so we are almost to the end of the show. Uh, I love to do this lightning round at the end. So this is kind of quick hits, Lacey. I'm going to ask you three quick questions uh and then we'll we'll go from there so number one your favorite book oh my favorite book getting tough one um so my favorite i'm going to tell you my favorite type of book um my favorite type of book is a cookbook um so probably not your standard answer it's what you're expecting but like i will read a cookbook from like front to back i like to read all the stories in it i like to read the recipes in it um you know, and just all of kind of the, the unique origins of where, where food comes from and, and the different cultures and the different types. So for me, that's, I would say that's my favorite type of book. That's the type of book that I read the most. Um, I've got a couple of new ones recently that I've, I've been going through. So, um, it's fun. So to go. I have one, I have one to put on your list. My son just bought this for me. It's called unprocessed. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to try that. Check it out. Uh, I will. All right. Number two, who's your hero and why? Um, I would say both of my parents, you know, like we talked about at the beginning, it's, um, you know, they, they're both small business owners. They've started their own companies and um, have been really successful in, in growing those companies. All right. I love that. And last but not least, what's the one thing that you want to leave to everybody just in closing? Yeah. So I think, and, you know, I'll kind of relate it back to this topic of, of building relationships. Um, so if, if you're looking to, you know, build new relationships, I would kind of challenge you with, hey, you know, in the next week or two weeks, go find a new event or a new group or something you haven't been to before where you can just simply meet meet one new person. You're probably going to meet a lot more than one, but focus that on, hey, how do I just go meet, you know, one new person? Um, but then on the other hand, I also think it's just as important to nurture and grow your existing relationship. So, um, you know, again, challenge you with pick up the phone, give someone a call that you haven't talked to for a while, you know, go grab a coffee, grab lunch with them, um, you know, and, and just continue to kind of keep those conversations going. I love all of that. And, you know, and Lacey, you're obviously an extrovert, at least in many respects. You may be, mm -hmm. you may be on the line between I and E, but, <laughs> uh, you know, for some people that's really hard to do. So, I, you know, I think you use the right word, you know, that you challenge people to do that because for some people it is a challenge. Uh, but I agree with you 100% building those relationships. It's what life is all about. So put yourself out there, make that phone call today. Uh, and Lacey, I want to thank you so much for being uh, with us today and for sharing your story and also giving us all of these different leadership tips. I think it was amazing. Thank you, Don. And thank you for having me here today. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody, uh, once again, follow Lacey on social media, check out Kerasoft. And uh, if you go to my website, P3 Tech Consulting, you'll see the couple places where she's been and also 
CareSoft is supporting our live event, Law Tech Connect Workshop. So come on down, everybody. Uh, that is all she wrote. Remember, leaders build relationships. We are out here.